Welcome, welcome to the best 591 podcast with Forrest Kelly. We continue our conversation with Laura DePasquale of Southern Glacier. Women of a certain age were, were told, well, you're being too... Best 591 podcast. We'll let Laura finish that statement in just a moment. But first, the mentorship programs at Southern Glacier. Now, these have traditionally been male-dominated sectors like supply chain or logistics. But how do you ensure that women entering the wine business receive the tailored guidance that they need to thrive? Specifically, can you tell me about that? So specifically, we have multiple mentor and menteeship programs within Southern Glazer. We have leadership development programs, everything starting from new leaders to advanced leaders to senior leaders to executive leaders. And these are really highly developed, extraordinary programs. You either nominate your employees to go into one of these programs with the exception of the Exceptional Leaders Program, which is by application. And it's a very competitive program. And this is really like the bench for our next generation of senior leaders and executive leaders. We also have something called Next Gen Leaders where we are uh, by application bringing in recent college graduates. They spend two years with us working in different departments. I think what employees and people who are looking to get into the wine or spirits distribution side don't understand is all the extraordinary opportunities. So while you might start as a sales consultant and work your way up through the commercial channel, right? Area manager, district manager, sales director, maybe a sales VP. There's also other applications, right? Business intelligence, financial, pricing, marketing, logistics, supply chain is huge, huge. Our B2B development. So there's extraordinary opportunity. And in this next gen program, these recent college graduates get to spend three months in very different departments or divisions so they can say, oh, wow, I thought I wanted to be on the marketing path or in the portfolio management path. But what I really love is supply chain and logistics after spending, you know, my time time with them. So I'm going to go down a supply chain logistics path. So (laughs) there's a lot of opportunities and a lot of different paths you can go down. It has to be a bit gratifying, but I imagine that over the course of your career, you've seen opportunities open up for women in leadership roles, correct? 100%. You know, I'm no longer the only woman in the room. There's usually several, which is which is fantastic. My boss is a woman. Cindy Leonard, and she's the executive vice president of Wine. And so that's extraordinary. It's really changed. In fact, I now have times where we're a group of women leaders together, not because we're the women's group, but because we're the leaders and we happen to be women. And so it's super gratifying. As a woman who's been in the business for over 20 years and a woman that used to be the only woman in the room, to sit in a room with all women, putting together a strategy, a business plan, a brand launch, whatever it is that we're working on, it's a moment where I quietly, personally, to myself, sit back and go, yeah, it's good now. <laughs> right? <laughs> And this is kind of a sensitive uh, topic. Uh, I, I want to put this delicately, but I always felt like there's a double standard between for women in passion, d- differentiating between passion and emotion. So can you coach or can you uh, teach somehow to embrace their passion without it being misinterpreted as emotional in professional settings, especially uh, when you're advocating for an important decision? How do you how do you deal with that? Is that teachable? Yeah, I think that's I think that that is is one thing that is very important. And I think women of a certain age were were told, well, you're being too emotional in a business setting. And it always used to bother me when people said that. And it was like, oh, I've got to OK, I've got to like check that. And then, you know, I came to a place with that where it's like, am I being emotional or am I being passionate? Yeah. And right. those are two different things. Uh-huh. If I passionately believe in a in a winery, right, or I passionately believe in a hire. For example, somebody is, uh, there's a there's a job opening and I'm 
putting forward my case for why that person should be hired over this person or why we should put our resources on this brand launch versus that brand launch or why we should target these markets. And I passionately believe it and I have facts to back it up. It's not just, you know, well, I think so. You know, <laughs> I think that finding that balance is really key. And, and what I sometimes see missing today and when I'm mentoring a woman in particular whose career is on the rise, I will tell them, listen, don't be afraid of that word emotional. I mean, it's one thing to break down in tears. It's another thing to be passionate and firmly believe in what you want to get done. The best five minute one podcast. Don't forget my favorite part. Please, please like and follow. Oh. 